Uh, so my name is Evgeny. I'm a data scientist and more like like a software engineer, data scientist kind of guy. And my talk today will be about history of Google and the very beginning of the Google as a search engine and the history of the search engines in general, but also about intellectual inquiry, was, which was behind the search engines as an idea. And so, but before I will go for this, uh, I want to ask questions. How many software engineers are here today? Could you please? Okay. So I'm not sure. Like okay, okay. Let's see. Let's see how it will work. So and also, if you think what I'm trying to flatter Google in giving me a job, you're absolutely right. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, to Google, it's a verb added to Oxford English Dictionary, June 15, 2006 means to search in internet for information with a Google search engine, but also it's used as just a synonym of searching in the internet. So, but do you know any of these brands, for example? Like, yeah, um, Yahoo probably, which one? Do you know this one? So all of this is, they are search engines, and there are search engines which have been there before Google. So Google wasn't the very first one. They only, Yahoo still exists, and Amazon uh, got rebranded as Bing, maybe, maybe you know it. So how does it happen? Like, uh, how Google get so much advantage? And to answer this question, first we need to look a little bit in perspective. So the state of the search in 1998. And uh, <laughs> to give you some feeling about how it was in the time, I will give you two quotes from the paper written by the founders of Google in which they describe the current state of art in this year. So the first quote, people are still only willing to look on the first few tens of results. So it was implied that you're looking for a few tens of results before. And my favorite one, only one of the top four commercial search engines finds itself. It means you type in Google and Google and you don't get results. So you can get some idea uh, uh, of the quality of this product in a moment. So, but before I will go to all the complications and the problems, which were the reason why it was the quality of search in a moment, first I would like to answer this question which I got asked when I've been preparing this presentation. If it looked strange for you, I'm sorry. So, and I was really fascinated how to answer this actually. Uh, so let's ask another question. How much time would it take for one request, if you will go over all the sites in the internet in the current state of art. So it's approximately 4.6 billion sites in the internet nowadays, uh, taking 10 milliseconds for one site, which is very, very optimistic. It will give us 46 million seconds, which is equal to 532 days for one request. And the Google is serving 30,000 requests per second. So now we can kind of understand what if we want to have something which is called search engine, we need to pre-process the data. So we, we cannot just go around and look in the internet every time when someone is asking. And so if you look abstractly in this kind of problem, so you can think about internet as a collection of pages. And on these pages, you have a text. And so in a very primitive example, you just want to retrieve all the pages which contains the text which you put in a query, right? And all of you, doesn't matter if you're a software engineer or not, know this concept. It's, it's, it's called index. So this is the book index, which is just a mapping of a word to the page on which you can find this word. And so it works fine. It works fine for the pages. In... OK, so by following this principle, let's, let's think how we will do it in the internet. So we just take one page, put a number, just put an index one on this. And then we go sequentially through all the words, all the terms on the page and store it in the form of mapping between term and the page ID. And so we go over all, every, every single word. I'm not doing it now, but you, you're getting the intuition. And so we go into the next one, and we extract the terms, and then we're getting the mapping of the term to the pages, number of pages. So we can retrieve all these pages. But then we never problem arose. So you can see it's 56 million pages for our search query. So it doesn't give us anything. By the way, look, have a look on this number. So it's a little bit less. Because Google has index. So, but if you look on this, on this problem, we understand it's, it's now a problem which is called problem of ranking. How to find the most relevant result for 
out of the pages retrieved for the query. And now I want to ask you a question. So, uh, for the query Olympic Games, which sites you will consider relevant? Which one you will expect to see on top? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's one idea. But more, more like looking more generally, right? Wikipedia page, there is official site of uh, Olympic movement, something like this. And it's very li li limited number, but it's not 50 second million pages. So, how can I approach this problem? And how it was approached in the very beginning when the search index uh, appeared? So, the first very simple idea we can just count number of occurrences of the term on the page. In assumption, if, what, if the page is talking a lot about the term, it means what it's kind of more about it. But uh, you can immediately see a flaw in this logic. Because the owner of the site has a total control about what's posted there. So someone can post Olympic Games one million times, and there is not a problem. You make it like invisible font, and you user will never see it. And so from point of view of search engine, yeah, it's it's one of the ideas which were implemented in the beginning. Uh, is it in the title of the page? It also was used. How specific the words of the query are? Like, it's a little bit more tricky, and I'm not going to into details, but you can kind of consider if this word is very frequently like on other sites, and based on this, make a conclusion how, how would this work for other search. But if you look on these methods which were used uh, in the very beginning, you understand one flaw in this. It's all about what page, what site is telling about itself. So there is no <laughs> no wisdom of a crowd here in any form. So, and it's how it was approached, but we can just try to remember what internet is a network. And it's a network on different levels. So one level is a physical level, internet is a network on the physical level, but our level, it's a level of links. So all the sites in the internet are interconnected by links, which brings us to the concept of hyperlink. So hyperlink is very easy. It's just the text which is marked in a certain way, and by clicking on this text on a page, you land on another page. So, and then it's another question comes here. So this text is on the, of the site of Olympic Games. Do you think it should be indexed as a part of the Olympic Games page? Like logically thinking, because this information corresponds to the site, the, land, the landing site, right? And there is this very first idea which founders of Google implemented. They just indexed the text on hyperlinks as a part of the landing page, and it gave already a huge improvement just because this is information which other people telling about the landing site. So, but then we can if make a little bit of a step forward. So let's consider all the hyperlinks, uh, and let's make what's called graph. So it's called direct graph when the dot it's it's sites in the internet, and these arrows are hyperlinks between the sites. So by looking at this, we already have make can make some assumptions. For example, we can say what some of the sites have more interconnections. So which we can use some kind of as some kind of heuristic. What this site probably is more important. It's just because our people. Uh, our people kind of making the links on, on this site. So, uh, but let's look on this problem from a little bit different perspective. So, when we're talking about relevance of a site, we can say that it's a site which are more likely to, to be visited by the people. It's a site which, and the sites which have more interconnections also more, more likely to be visited to the people. So, uh, yeah, it gives us some information, but how how we approach it, how we how we rank these sites, and let's okay, let's let's take a very simple approach. So imagine we are starting from a random place as a user, and then randomly switch to the site uh, to a random site on which there is an interconnection in the next one. So like this, and every time when we visit the site, we just count it. We just put a number of visits. So as you can see, there is a site already on which it's more likely to be uh, to be landed for the user, and it's totally intuitive what sites with more interconnection have a, have a more score at the end of the day. So let's do it again. And we're just running this approach. We can we can uh, kind of statistically estimate 
how likely for the user will be to, to land on this site. So the whole approach is called PageRank algorithm, which was the algorithm which Google from the very beginning used, and by, by which the Google got the huge advancement of the competitors in the very beginning. And so, as you may notice, as you may notice, I didn't mention any map. So I didn't put any formula or any kind of concept no one can understand. And it most, mostly was about intuition. So these findings were more about imagination one than about knowledge. And this finding led to the great success of this company. Uh, so this is the point of my presentation. Take a different angle on the known problem and you can succeed. And it's apparently not that difficult for some people. <laughs>